All right, we are now at Fort Columbia. We're gonna check it out. Looks like there's some bunkers here where there were ar artillery pieces and there's an officer's row. So join us as we explore Fort Columbia. On this episode of Searching for History, we visit the second of three forts that make up the harbor defenses at the mouth of the Columbia River. Fort Columbia, like Fort Canby, is on the Washington side of the river, about 10 miles east of Fort Canby along Highway 101. Construction of Fort Columbia began in 1896 and was completed in 1900. The fact the fort was built on a hill at this location with a southwest aspect allowed the gun batteries to have a strategic view towards the mouth of the Columbia. As seen on this information panel, Fort Columbia had around a 140 degree arc of fire in front of the fort. From about Fort Canby on Cape Disappointment over to the city of Astoria, Oregon. The fort was deactivated in 1947. Today, Fort Columbia is a Washington State Park with a dozen historic wood-framed buildings and four artillery batteries. So I don't know how well you can see across there, but that hill in the distance on the other side of the water, that's the hill where Fort Canby is located. So those guys look pretty young. Mm -hmm. Fort Columbia was built between 1896 and 1906, and due to its remote location, it had all of the amenities you would find in a small civilian town including its own power plant, hospital, fire station, theater, and jail. Additionally, the fort had its own garrison housing, officers' quarters, barracks, and administrative buildings. All of the soldiers also had civilian jobs that were useful to the fort, bakers, barbers, gardeners, musicians, etc. Their army-issued food was delivered at a nearby dock, but they were also trading with local food producers. This is Battery Ord, third gun. So we're standing right here on top of the third gun emplacement. Okay. And because of drainage problems, it was condemned and the army filled it in.
The most interesting of the artillery batteries is Battery 246. Battery 246 was built during World War II as part of the Triangle of Fire to protect the entrance to the Columbia River. However, after Washington State took over the property in 1950, plans for Battery 246 began to change. Beginning in the 1960s, the state prepared Battery 246 as a civil defense relocation site for state government. It became one of four emergency operations centers in Washington. As an emergency operations center, the battery was set up to allow the governor and other officials a temporary location to run the government during a nuclear attack or other major disasters. The battery was equipped with generators, air compressors, powder and shell storage, a plotting room, water and food storage, a latrine, and airlocks, all protected under thick concrete. Today the battery no longer serves this purpose. The facility has not been used in decades and is currently off limits to the public. This battery, 246, only got the guns in 1993. Okay, so, so where did the gun come from? Washington State Parks obtains two guns from the U.S. Naval Facility in Argentina and Newfoundland, Canada. They're identical to the guns that were planned for Battery 246. Right. Um, only they are of two of only six remaining guns of this kind in the world. Yeah. So, Battery 246 took 50 years to finish. Um, so construction began in 1945 during World War II. Um, everything was built, but the gun tubes were never installed because by that time mounted guns were obsolete because of the advances in military technology. Right. So they like built the whole thing, but then they were like, well, why would we put guns here? Let's take a closer look at this gun. That's steel, I think. I think so. From a distance, I thought it was concrete. Me too. Yep, that's a big gun. Three rapid fire three inch guns were mounted atop this battery to protect a minefield that lay in the Columbia River between Fort Columbia and Fort Stevens on the Oregon side. By 1918 they were considered obsolete and removed. So what do you think about Fort Columbia? I think this place is cooler than Fort Canby, even though the view is better at Fort, Ca Fort Canby. But this place has like more cool stuff at it, you know, because it has the officers row and the barracks up there and then it has all of this. The view at Fort Canby is higher up and unobstructed. So it's, it's nice from that perspective, but I think Fort Columbia is cooler because it has more historical architecture at it. Yeah, there's just more here to see when it yeah. comes to a you know, a 20th century or early 20th century fortification. Yeah, I feel like if I had come here when I was a kid, I would have spent the whole day here. So you can see here is an example 
of the retracting guns. They actually call it a disappearing gun. So when it's in the firing position, it's raised and the barrel is above the concrete, what they call the blast apron. And then after it fires, it retracts down to the lowered position. And then it's, uh, it's more obscure. You can't see it with direct line of sight. Yeah. Upon firing, recoil would send the gun to its lowered position. This is called Battery Murphy. Yeah. They're talking about the disappearing gun here and the disappearing gun here. These guns were never fired in actual combat. They were shot thousands of times for practice. All right, that was our visit to Fort Columbia. So now we've seen two of the forts on the north side of the mouth of the Columbia River. In the next episode, we're going to go to the final one, Fort Stevens, on the Oregon side. Stay tuned for our next episode of Searching for History, where we visit Fort Stevens, the third of the three forts that make up the harbor defenses at the mouth of the Columbia River.